Hey guys, this is Fabian. Today I'm going to do a quick video about the accessories that came for this back window in the truck that we installed a little while ago. And we're just going to be doing some measurements, just kind of showing how it all works. And uh, hopefully in the future do some camping and sleep in the bed with HVAC, more comfortable. All right, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so we are looking once again at the uh, the window that came with the uh, the breezer windows replacement structure. And the thing that came in is that we're going to show are the accessories. And the first one is the bag. So this is a this is a bag made out of some uh, fabric vinyl material, and it's designed so that you can put the window uh, into the bag and put it away when you're not using it. So again, as mentioned, uh, this, this window attaches uh, to, the, uh, to the structure that replaced the original window of the Cybertruck over here. And so I've taken it off, and I'm just, for show, I'm taking it off here and putting it on the bed and showing you the accessory bag that it came with. Uh, so we'll just do a quick measurement now and show the, show the window in the bag. So. All right, so I've gone ahead and put the window into the bag. Um, it's got a pretty beefy zipper here. Uh, just close it up. And the bag fits nicely in the bag. It's got like a softer side of the material on the, on the inside so it doesn't scratch the glass. And you just kind of close this up and zip it up. And that's the storage bag for the glass. And it can fit in a few places. So I'm going to show you the front and then the the back of the truck where it might be able to fit and uh, as a user you might decide that one is better than the other so here we go all right so here we're looking at the cyber truck front area the front of the vehicle and uh, this is the, uh, the bag hopefully you can see it there's a lot of sunlight here today uh, but there's the bag that came with the with the window system uh, and I put the window in it and it does technically fit in the front uh, but as everybody knows, um, the Cybertruck um, is not perfectly flat in almost any surface uh, for storage. So the bed and the frunk, they have these angles to them. So although this looks like it's flat, it's actually not flat. And so there's kind of an indentation on both sides. And so, you know, glass is a flat structure here. And so it, it doesn't bode well to, um, to put in some situations. But if someone has like, you know, some backing structure uh, that they'd like to put in here, maybe a bag or something, so that this can be um, vertical, then this might fit well in, in the front. You can decide that it's good for you. Um, but that's one of the options. It, it doesn't fit flat. I tried that. Um, the corners of the glass are just a few inches too wide. And so there are some limitations there, but that's that's what it looks like in the front for everyone that's curious. All right, so we're in the bed of the truck and we are taking a look at one of the areas that the glass and the bag might fit. Um, this structure here is somewhat flat. It's not perfectly flat. Uh, there is an angle here. Uh, most of the sides of the truck bed are not completely flat. And so the back of this bag, um, which I'm not showing right now, but it's on the back of the bag, there are large strips of self-adhesive Velcro so that you could potentially, you know, put this on the side of the truck. And, you know, that might work um, for some people, so it's an option. I think if you lift this bag a little bit, kind of get it closer to the, uh, to the rail that's there, uh, you can adhere this bag to the side, so that might be an option. So we're going to look at the other area in the back that might work. Okay, so we're looking at the other side of the bed, uh, where the window and bag might be a good fit. And uh, right under the window, there is a flat structure right here. And if you if you're attaching this bag to this side, and again, it has self-adhesive, what I would consider to be permanent Velcro, um, 
you can actually put the bag in completely flat at what essentially is an angle. And so when you take the glass off of the structure, you would unzip the bag and just slide it in and it would stay there. So that's another option that you have. Um, now in this situation, you know, one could argue that the bag's kind of constantly at a lower tilt and the glass in the bag is constantly pulling at that adhesive. So with the heat and everything, one has to wonder if that's a good idea. Uh, but it's certainly an option uh, if everything holds. So, so that's another option for you. Okay. So with the window removed, um, I just wanted to show a quick video showing what the structure looks like. And we're just going to show that now here. We see the, um, the window's been removed and the structure's installed. And it just kind of uh, replaces the window here, the original window. Everything fits just the way the window did, except now that you have um, this additional structure. And these are, these are holes where air flows from the cabin to the bed. Um, so it doesn't really change anything except for give you that additional option. All right, so we're gonna try and capture putting the window back in into the, uh, the little slot there you see. There's a slot all the way across the structure. And then there's a handle here. So you, this is the window loose. And you could take it out at this point, but this is the video of putting it back in. So you just, you just push down on the floor. This one and all these four clips are now grabbing on that window and it's centered. You can see how close this comes to the edge, the little lip and the seal on the inside, so it is sealed from the elements. Your cabin is now uh, protected as well. So, one of the questions that came up was if the uh, new structure with the window uh, impeded on the vault cover from rolling up and down when the window's installed. And the design of this is, of course, that it does not impede that. And so we're just going to do a quick measurement. Uh, the vault cover is up on the bottom of the structure. And just to show, there's, um, there's comfortably a, a half inch uh, of space between the structure uh, and the vault cover on the bottom, and we'll show the top now. So here we have the vault cover slightly raised, and we're going to show the the top uh, clearance of the um, the structure. Uh, and let's see if we can get that. So I'm I'm positioning the t the tape measure against the handle, which is the the part that comes out mostly of the structure. And you can't really tell, um, but you can, you can fit a small finger uh, between the two, the vault cover and the structure. So it doesn't, it also doesn't touch, it doesn't impede. So we are continuing to look at the accessories of this HVAC solution for the bed. And what I'm showing you now is the, the tubing, uh, the long tubing which connects to the vent uh, at the bottom of the front seat. You can see that right, right there, this structure right here. And the idea is that it connect to uh, anywhere in the area where the holes are over here. So if we look in detail, uh, the, this vent kit has this area here which has uh, Velcro to connect it and that kind of puts it in place and has a has a seal all the way around and on the other side we have this part which is completely one-off uh, I mean it's mass-produced but it's uh, it's only for the solution 
and these little clips kind of go uh, into the structure there of the, where the window was replaced. And this tubing is very high quality tubing. It kind of moves around and just like a really high quality like vacuum tube. So it's about two and a half meters long when it's not stretched out. And then when you, uh, when you stretch it out, I'm sure you could get another meter out of it. Um, but this allows you to comfortably connect those two areas. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna show now is the tube installed. And we're just gonna show this as an example. Um, if we look, there's the vent structure. And this is the tube that's running up. And it connects to the breezer windows structure and pushes that air into the bed. So as with anything, this is a delicate component. So, you know, you want to kind of treat it with care and uh, put it away when you're done. But uh, this is the part that enables that air to move to the back. All right, so we're going to continue doing a little bit of testing to kind of feel out this uh, HVAC solution to the bed. And I pulled out my uh, digital pretty good industry standard unit so so in order to get the air to flow uh, to the bottom of the seats um, you have to you have to turn on the vents in the back, the back seat um, you get a lot of air flow from the sides here it doesn't appear that you can just shut this one off and these will continue. I can't quite can't quite seem to do that. Um, so when you turn on the one in the back, you also have to do something in the front to get airflow to come out of here. And at full blast, uh, we appear to be getting this uh, measurement. I'm not an HVAC expert. Um, I've compared it to vents in my home and this seems like a reasonable amount of air for the square footage that we're trying to cool. And if I put my hand here, I definitely can feel a good amount of air coming out of this vent. It usually, it mostly comes out this way. So it's like straight on where your feet are. Um, now the thing is, is um, there's an awful lot of air coming through here, which is good. It keeps the back cabin rolling. It keeps the temperature good there. Um, you know, it might be worth considering if uh, Breezer Windows would want to create some kind of a U attachment with maybe a strap that goes all the way around this console, somehow maybe connecting in through this gap here when you open up the center console. It gives you an opportunity of strapping things in. So that might be an opportunity to simply strap something here. Um, you get a lot more airflow from here, a lot more. So using this as the source of air might be something to consider. So if we go into the front of the truck um, and we go to the air conditioning section, the way that you get uh, air to flow out of the bottom of the front seats, um, if you can see it, is this setting right here in blue. So I've turned off the air to the other two um, areas of the air conditioner. It's technically still considered the front. And so I turned on the bottom seats and that's how I got maximum output. And by the way, I took it off of auto in order to achieve this. Now, when you go to rear, it's essentially the same thing as what you get in the back. It's all set on high right now. Um, so it might, be, it might be more reasonable to pull air out of the back of the center console um, because you can run it at a lower setting probably and still get a lot of air to the back. So that's uh, the information on the HVAC. It seems like a lot of airflow, but it, you know, I think maybe we could do better. 
All right, so uh, just one final video before we close out. Um, there was a feature that was available just a few firmwares ago, but I think Tesla is either blocked it in a really weird way because um, it's no longer available. I'm going to show you what it is. So in order to complete this model, if you want to go camping, you know, you can just do it on the street or you know, on a flat surface. But one of the cool things about the Cybertruck is that uh, if you go into camp mode, it will self-level. And camp mode in the Cybertruck essentially means that you are um, you you are essentially uh, with the camper that they sell, or you could put a camper in the back or something. And when you set up camp mode, uh, what happens is um, it expects you to camp uh, in a little camper with the tonneau cover open. So so our goal is to be able to self level the vehicle, uh, leave the HVAC on and then close the tonneau cover uh, so that uh, so that you can uh, camp in, in this feature using the breezer windows structure. Uh, but it looks like there might be a limitation here, but let's see how far we can get now. And um, I know that you can, I know you can go into dog mode uh, and you can close the tonneau cover that way, but it looks like camp mode is no longer a feature. They, they've blocked it and I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna, you know, the katana cover is closed now, and I know that dog mode works, but let's go ahead and try the self-leveling feature so you see. We're gonna go to outlets and mods, okay? And the first thing you do is you select cyber tent mode, okay? And then you can hear it, that opens up the uh, tonneau cover and it shows you the kind of the structure that, you know, the Tesla sells, uh, but we're not really interested in that. And now the truck is self-leveling. So that's kind of a nice little feature. It says uh, suspension leveling, right? So you can see that happening. I don't know if you can hear the little motors. Um, and you know, I might be camping, so I'm probably gonna turn on the outlets here. And so now, um, now what would happen is you'd be able to go into uh, service and you'd be able to go into car wash mode. That was the trick before. And you could enter car wash mode and you'd be able to close the tonneau cover in this menu. So here you can see that all these buttons are available. You can push them to fold the mirrors. I can fold the mirrors, look. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but my mirror's just folded. It's kind of kind of dark at night. And then there's a button to close the tonneau and it's it's not grayed out or anything, but if you push it, it doesn't it doesn't do anything anymore. So this worked like a few firmwares ago. So I cannot force close my tonneau cover in car wash mode when I'm in camp mode anymore. And that was kind of the workaround where you could stay leveled and uh, and also close the tonneau with the HVAC on, whatever, all night or whatever and sleep in the bed. So there's something not not right here. Uh, this has to be something that Tesla did. They blocked it. I know they blocked it because this used to work and I'm gonna show you how. So if I go into uh, cyber temp mode and turn that off, okay? And then I go back into car wash mode. So let's exit car wash mode to let it refresh. Uh, and I'm gonna go into car wash mode in service. So now I'm in car wash mode without uh, without the camp mode being turned on, okay? And I'm gonna push close tonneau cover, and I don't know if you can hear it, and it's closing the tonneau cover, just like I asked it to. But when you're in camp mode, although this button is available, it doesn't work. It used to work. So anyway, here we are, and I just wanted to show that little limitation. I don't know if this is gonna be fixed or what, but but we're here now. Thank you.